Hey, this is Anthony Davis, and in this video, we are going to talk about uh, three different ways that you can reach overhead. Um, so take your arms from your sides and get them to an overhead position. Um, for a lot of people, it won't make a huge difference whether you choose abduction, scaption, uh, which I'll define in a moment if you're unfamiliar with that term, and flexion. Um, However, for a lot of people, it can make a big difference whether you choose one or the other. And there are biomechanical and anatomical reasons for that, which is the purpose of this video. So if you want to learn a little bit about anatomy and learn a little bit about how to make good decisions, um, or really I should say how to make more personalized decisions that are appropriate for one person's body versus another person's body, then uh, this video is going to explain that. Hey, uh, before we get into the meat and potatoes of this video, if you like this kind of content and you like anatomy and yoga and movement and all of that, then please uh, like and subscribe uh, to this channel because then you'll get notifications when I produce new content. Um, Cool. And feel free to comment too if you've got any questions. I love answering questions. So uh, let's get into it. So let's start with abduction. So abduction is going to be a what we call a coronal or frontal plane motion. So you're reaching out to the sides. And um, in these drawings that I make, the blue here, um, all this area in here, all that blue stuff is a um, is the plane of motion. So you're moving the arms in along that plane. So the arms in this case are sweeping out directly to the side and then up. So this is going to, um, well, I, you know what, actually, I should uh, just quickly give a definition of scaption. So scaption is going to be uh, a, a movement that is going to cause the least amount of stress, both tension and compression on the shoulder joint. And it has to do with the angle at which the shoulder joint points. So let's just, um, for now, this is the middle ground. Scaption is like the middle of the road. And then as we go towards abduction, we're going to have, um, posterior uh, post <laughs> posterior compression and as we go towards flexion we're going to have anterior compression and the opposite would be true for tension. So if we have posterior, uh, if we're doing abduction, we have posterior compression, then the anterior or the front side of your shoulder would have tension on it. So um, as we move towards abduction and we sweep the arms straight out and then we go up, then we are going to see that we have uh, posterior compression because the stuff on the, the the posterior capsule and the cartilage and all that stuff on the posterior, the back side of your shoulder is going to get compressed. And meanwhile, because you're reaching kind of out to the side, then the front side of your shoulder is, or if you look at the video here, the front side of your shoulder is going to stretch out, right? So if you want to stretch the front of your shoulder, you reach kind of behind you. Well, that's kind of like what's happening in abduction. And uh, with, with that and with regards to some of the stuff that is underneath your, what we call the um, acromioclavicular joint or the AC joint of the shoulder, there's like a bunch of bursa and uh, some tendons and stuff. And sometimes those get compressed. Um, well, that would be normal. So compression happens and that's like not always a bad thing. But if it gets compressed too much, then it can start to get a little irritable. And we would see that in abduction, that would be probably the more challenging position of these three options. Abduction will be the most challenging um, way to lift your arms for most people. So this would be the uh, most challenging. Uh, why? Because of compression of the um, uh, subacromial space. Okay, so that's uh, that's abduction, right? Now, 
If we look at uh, scaption, this is going to be neutral, so we're not going to have really compression or tension on either side of the joint. So scap uh, scaption is um, easy. And then flexion is going to be kind of the um, middle of the road. And the reason for that is that although it does, so when you reach forward and your, your arm goes forward, you are compressing the front of your shoulder and you're stretching out the back side of your shoulder. So there, you still have that compression and, te and, and tension. Tension is the same as stretching kind of. So uh, you still have that compression and tension, but what happens is that when you reach up in flexion, um, as you reach up like this, with your arm in flexion, what happens is that, so there's this little um, bursa and some tendons in here, right? So this whole area right here um, has some stuff in it that tends to get compressed in abduction, more in abduction than in the other two options that I'm showing you here. Again, compression is okay, compression is normal, but some people will respond to compression in uh, by having pain. And so for those people, they will want to find movements that are less irritable for that, that area. So when you go through flexion, essentially what's happening is that if you've got this little kind of area, um, of, you know, here's some stuff. Then when you reach up, think about it like you're rolling that stuff backwards. So you're taking that stuff and you're kind of rolling it backwards. So it kind of gets out of the way a little bit. And so flexion can tend to be a little bit easier than, uh, than the other options. So now let's look at the anatomy um, in closer detail. So here's a skeleton and here's a scapula. And when you look at the scapula, what you'll find is that if we look at it from the straight on, there's this thing called the uh, glenoid fossa. And the glenoid fossa is this bit right here. Okay. So this is the glenoid fossa. And you'll see that it's not facing us straight on. So it's not facing straight forward, which would make flexion really easy. So it's not doing that. What it is doing is it's kind of facing sideways, diagonal. But it's also not facing completely sideways. So it's not completely sideways. That would be abduction. It's not facing completely forward. That would be flexion. Um, it's facing uh, diagonally, which is scaption. Cool. So uh, if that's the case, and let's get rid of all this. So, and let's take a look at it from the side, from directly from the side angle here. Now let's get rid of the humerus for a moment. Come on now. Go away go away. There we go. So here we have the scapula. And again, when we're looking at it from the side angle, notice that that little white part, that glenoid fossa is not facing straight sideways, but it's also not facing straight forward. I will turn this person at a diagonal about 45 degrees here. And now we see that the glenoid fossa is facing us directly. So this is interesting because if we pull up a muscle, the um, supraspinatus. So here's the supraspinatus muscle. Oops. And you'll see that it goes kind of diagonally. So it's not going straight sideways and it's not going straight forwards. If we look at it from above, it's going at an angle. So if you, whoop, let's do this here. And there we go, that's perfect. So if we take a pen, and we look, so this would be straight sideways there. So here's straight sideways. This is gonna be abduction. Um, and then here is flexion. Okay. 
is reaching straight forward and then up. And then we have what we're talking about, this uh, scaption, which is along that scapular plane reaching up in that way. And that is um, scaption. So when you reach up in that plane, uh, you can see that the supraspinatus muscle has a more, at least theoretically, it has a more direct line of pull. Now, how much does that matter? Um, it's difficult to say because the rotator cuff, its primary job is not really to do the heavy lifting in the first place for the um, glenohumeral joint. But uh, hypothetically, at least for some people, they'll find that if this muscle, this uh, the rotator cuff, its primary job is stabilization. So its primary job is to hold the, uh, um, the head of the humerus in that capsule and, and keep it centrated is what we call it. So keep the, basically, if we have a, a ball in a socket, we want that ball in the center of the socket. We don't want the ball to be off to the side or too far up or too far down. We want it to be nice and centered right here. And so that's what the rotator cuff does. And so if this supraspinatus muscle has a better line of pull for somebody who maybe is um, having some weird kind of biomechanics that are causing pain, then if this muscle can work better, then it might just happen that by reaching up in this scapular plane and doing scaption instead, that that muscle works a little differently and then the biomechanics change a little bit and then it alleviates their pain a little bit. Um, so that's possible. It's not necessary. You don't have to do this, but it might work for that person. The other thing is that as you move towards abduction, then you can see that if I take the arm and I reach it out to the side here, then if I'm reaching over here, then what's going to happen? All the muscles, um, all the stuff that's on the back side of the shoulder here gets compressed. And then all the stuff on the front side of the shoulder gets stretched out. Does that make sense? If you're reaching out to the side, all the stuff on the front side gets stretched out and all the stuff on the back side gets compressed. Okay. And then, uh, oh no. Oh, cool. <laughs> it's, I thought I was going to get rid of everything. And the same would be for uh, true for flexion. So um, let's just use the abduction um, example here and say that, well, if you have some cartilage or, you know, the part of the, your labrum on the posterior side, the back side of your shoulder is sensitive, then if you reach in abduction, then all this stuff back here is getting compressed. And if it's getting compressed, it might bother you. It might not bother most people, but it, if it bothers you, then maybe that's kind of what's going on. It doesn't mean that you can never explore abduction, but what it does mean is if you find that, if you find that when you reach out to the side and on the back side of the shoulder, it's a little pinchy, then maybe you wanna try and do something totally different. Maybe you wanna try reaching forward into um, flexion instead, because then when you reach into flexion here, then with flexion, you'll see that uh, all this stuff on the back, which was compressed, gets nice and, and stretched out and elongated. And so you're mobilizing that tissue in a way that it wasn't used to, and it might feel good. Um, so, so a lot of this is experimentation, right? So we can use this to inform ourselves and say like, well, okay, so this person is having trouble when they reach out to the sides and then overhead. So abduction is painful for them. And then you try flexion and you're like, well, that's not really that much better. It, it creates new problems. Well, maybe that's where this scapular plane elevation, this scaption here, this middle ground where you don't have compression or tension really on either side of the joint capsule, maybe that's where this is a better option for that person. So think of scaption as the easiest option. So this is the easiest for most people, but, uh, and then flexion would be number two your second option, and then abduction would be the hardest option. It would be the most difficult with the most compression. So you don't wanna just get stuck only doing scaption. You wanna be able to progress and explore your full range of motion. All of these are good options. All of these are fair game for exploration. But if you're having trouble and you're having some pain, start with scaption 
and then try flexion, and then try abduction. Or if you know you have uh, some compressive issues or some tension issues or something like that, then you can uh, adjust the compression and tension and flip it. So if, you, if compression and tension in flexion is a problem, eh, try abduction. If abduction is a problem, try flexion. A lot of this is really intuitive, but um, I think that by just thinking about the anatomy here a little bit, um, you can start to get ideas and get creative and... and um, and kind of brainstorm. And remember, again, this is a progression and a regression sort of scenario. So you don't always need to be trying to do the hardest thing that's possible, and you don't always need to baby yourself and pretend like you need to do the easiest thing possible. It's just symptoms. If you start to have difficulty with one thing, then let's regress it a little bit. Let's try something a little easier. Let's build up some strength and some confidence, and then let's make things a little bit more difficult slowly over time. So um, if you have any questions, that was uh, a decent amount of anatomy and, and biomechanics. Uh, but uh, uh, again, I just don't want you coming away with like, you know, abduction equals bad and you must always do scaption. That's silly. Yeah, these are just options. Um, so yeah, ask me questions in the comments, uh, subscribe to the channel, like it, share with your friends, and um, I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.